This is the first day of the Build Your Audience Challenge. This video is about kicking off the Build Your Audience Challenge. So big welcome if you are just joining us today. Oh man, you're in for a treat. Um, this video, I am gonna be kicking off your second assignment. So if you missed the first assignment that was just posted in a text post about 90 minutes ago. So be sure to go into the group and uh, do that first assignment because that's really meant to weed out the week. So going into this video and over the next few days of this Build Your Audience Challenge, every day I'm going to be going live or posting an assignment in the group. These assignments are meant to help you take actual action on your business to not only get really clear on who your customer is, but setting you up to have that seven figure empire and really building something that is going to fund freedom, fund your lifestyle and really change your life. And that first assignment is so important because if you didn't do the first assignment, I've found that while coaching entrepreneurs for over six years, the ones that actually take advice, the ones that take action and the ones that kind of do what the mentor asks are the ones that end up actually building the business and hitting their goals. Whereas the ones that kind of sit on the sidelines and don't take action are likely not going to hit their goals. So definitely go back to assignment one. You want to start this off on the first foot, but that brings me to this video. So when you join the group, there were about three questions that I asked you guys to answer. And one of those questions is what, where do you want to see your business in 12 months? Or what, like how much money do you want to make with this business? And that was for me, not only for you to have to write down what your goal is and what you're building with this business, but also for me to understand kind of where your head is at. And what's really interesting about those numbers that came back is we had some of you come back and say that you within 12 months, you want to scale your business to 10 million a year exit. We had some of you say, I'm, I just be happy with an extra $500 a month in passive income. And the numbers are so, there's such a spectrum of numbers that I wanted to first kick off this video by saying that if you are somebody that had put in either you didn't put in the number or you said, oh, you know what? I only want to make $500 or a couple hundred dollar extra dollars a month in passive income from this. This is not the group for you. And this is not the business for you. The reality is that my, and there's nothing wrong with your numbers, but the sweet spot of this group and who we coach and who we work with is with people who are building brands. So even if you have a full-time job right now, which most of our clients start off with full-time jobs, if you don't have the vision to build a seven figure empire, to bring a, a product to market or products to market that serve a need and make this world a better place, if you're just in it to make a couple of quick bucks, this is not the business for you because we were seriously are focusing on building brands that serve your lifestyle so that you're able to live on your terms, to be able to quit your job, be able to bring a product into this world that, you know, not only serves you and the life that you want, but also makes your customers' lives better because of the problem you're solving. So if you did write down in your answers that you only want to make a couple extra hundred dollars, the reason why this group isn't for you is because this is not a get rich quick scheme. The work we do over the next few days is not meant to help you cash out in a month. It's meant for people who are building serious legacies. So if you now are watching this and you're like, oh, I did write only a couple, I only want to make an extra couple hundred dollars a month in passive income. You can change your answer. Well, you can't go back and change your answer, but you can change your intention going into this group by now being on the same page with what we are building together and who needs to be here and the brand builders that we serve and the work we're doing together. So now that I know that we are in the right place, let's keep going. 
So we, I want to, in this assignment, in this video, really dig into what is the biggest mistake I see a lot of e-commerce brand builders um, have. And the biggest mistake that I see is how they go about making money. So when you're just getting started online, or if you already have a product online, because maybe you are an Amazon seller, and regardless of where you're at with, if you're in your first product to market, or this is product number five, the biggest mistake I see people is when they go to do product selection, is they're asking, what product should I bring to market? And while there's nothing wrong with that, when you focus on, hmm, what product should I bring to market? That gets you to start looking at industry trends, popular project, products, fads, things that sell quick, sell fast, sell now, but are only relevant for this year. And what ends up happening when you focus on bringing products to market that are based on trends or fads is that they're going to be a one hit wonder this year and then fizzle out next year. And you're going to end up constantly needing to find new products to bring to market and always looking for the new thing. And it's a way to sell, but it's not the fastest way to get to seven figures. When you are asking the question of what kind of product am I bringing to market? You are typically focused on making fast money as opposed to building equity into something bigger. Okay. When you focus on what product should I bring to market, you're focused on what is selling today, but that forces you to not look at why your product is different or who you are serving with your product. So selling on Amazon now has become really um, dangerous for bottom barrel pricing, where if you end up just looking at the service of what product should I sell? You end up listing your product as just based on features and benefits. And there's nothing new and noteworthy. You just end up competing with a bunch of other Me Too products, which means that if the only, when a customer goes to Amazon or, or goes to your storefront because you're doing drop shipping or you're just selling like products that aren't novel or aren't kind of unique or focus on a certain kind of demographic, which we're getting into in a second you end up only competing on price because the only real differentiator of your product is price. And so you get people who end up being able to cut margins, drop pricing, and it's literally a race to the bottom in pricing. So if you are focused on asking the question, what product should I bring to market? That opens up a major can of worms for you bringing products to market that are fads that will sell now, but not sell tomorrow. And second, have really bad margins because you'll have other sellers that really the only differentiator when a customer is presented with two different options, they're going to go for the, the cheaper one. Um, and that's not the way to run a business. And that's really the biggest mistake I see people get um, people tapping into when they're really trying to build a sustainable long term empire and something that's unique, something that's different is they focus on the product and not the person. So you want to be shifting your focus to asking the question, who am I serving with my products? Okay. So a difference with that is we have, for example, we worked with a brand called Kelly Weights. And if you followed our case studies, you know that they are the weighted fitness bracelets that allow you to kind of tone as you go, right? And Kelly Weights was launched by Eric, where um, a few years back, him and his wife saw a competing product, Bala Bangles, which were kind of the first weighted bracelets come to market. And Bala Bangles were these weighted bracelets that ended up being on Shark Tank. And when his wife bought them, couple years back, she saw some areas of improvement with the product. She's like, she, you know, she wanted them to be less, she wanted weighted bracelets that would be less bulky and be accessorized better. Right. And so Bala Bangles, um, was kind of the first to market with these weighted bracelets and they ended up doing fairly well. 
and they're now in major retailers, Shark Tank uh, picked them up, et cetera, et cetera. But then Eric fo and his wife focused on bringing a better improved version of Bala Bangles to market and called it Kelly Weights. So at this time, by the time Kelly Weights launched, a consumer could go on Amazon and buy a no brand weighted bracelets from China or other countries that were a third of the price of Bala Bangles. And so at this point, when Eric launched Cali Weights, we ended up selling a set of Cali Weights for about 50 US dollars. And so what we did with Cali Weights was it, he, Eric didn't want to go on Amazon just to sell another cheap version of Bala Bangles because there's nothing noteworthy about that. If you go on Amazon and search for weighted fitness jewelry, there's different options and they're all like half the price of a brand of Cali weights or a brand of Bala Bangles. But Eric and I went out to build a brand for Cali weights. We went out to build a brand that focused on serving a specific person. So we focused on the busy professional. We focused on the person that is active, but they want to have a way to stay in shape on the go without the hassle of having to potentially go to the gym. And so because we focused all of our marketing and our messaging on serving a specific person, we were able to build a brand and a mission that served that customer so that in the future, when we have Kelly Weights selling a product for twice as much as cheap competing products on Amazon, what you're doing is you are able to build a premium brand. Okay. So not only are you able to charge more with, uh, profits that are with better profit margins in it, but we're able to do this because when we sought out to create this first brand, we focused on who is the person we are serving. So now that with line extension, so after we've been, you know, after 12 months of launching on Indiegogo and then getting to over 50K a month in sales in 12 months, we, with Eric, were able to get him set up to bring other products to market that serve that same customer demographic. So now with Cali Weights, he not only has the a couple of different lines of the weighted fitness jewelry, but they're also bringing in other products that serve that main demographic. So that's really the difference. And the fastest way to get to seven figures in sales is not by asking yourself, what is the product that I can bring to market? Because you end up changing products and not focusing and not really building anything. So it's a quick get in, quick out, get out versus building something that makes it really easy to design products in the future. Because with Eric, we were able to take Kelly weights that and def really define who is the customer we're serving with this. And then once we have that first product, figuring out what product comes to market next is easy because we just look at, okay, well, who is the person we're serving and what other products can we bring to market that make their lives easier? And then, you know, moving forward, when you focus on the person you're serving and solving their problems, your products are going to be successful and you end up creating a suite of products with that first product that end up selling. And so that's how over the course of a couple or a few years, you end up having customers that come back over and over and over again because they love your product. They love the relationship they have with you and they know that your brand and what you sell is specifically designed to work with that person. So when we go back to what is the biggest mistake that sellers do and miss out on, it's asking the wrong question. So your assignment for today and when you are done, write done in the comments of this video. What I want you to do is ask yourself this one question. It's a really good journal prompt as well. If you just want to like write it down, but you want to ask yourself, okay, if I had no obstacles, if I had no competition, money were not a factor and I could charge whatever I want and I can work with whoever I want, who is the person that I want to serve? Who is the person 
that I am serving. Where, right? So define that. Figure out exactly what that is. And when you write down on the person you're serving, you can either share it below in the comments or if you don't want to share it, that's totally cool. But when you're done this exercise, please type done in the comments. And we can help you refine that a little bit with who you're serving. But that is the question and that is the different way that I need you to start thinking about the products that you bring to market and what your brand actually is. Your brand is not there to bring random products to market anymore. It's there to serve a certain person. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of who that person is when you plant your flag and say, this is who I'm serving. Okay. So again, as a summary, this is who I'm serving, not what is the product I need to bring to market. Okay. So let's look at a few examples. One of my favorite, I featured Lisa from Series Chill in a previous post in the first assignment. So Lisa was a full-time lawyer with two young kids, husband drafted overseas, and she had just been through breastfeeding twice with her kids. But see, Lisa's problem at the time was she commuted one hour every day to work to the office. And while breastfeeding with two young kids, anyone who has gone through that process knows that they want to be able to keep breastfeeding, but they just can't because if they're at the office all day, the milk ends up spoiling. So Lisa thought there's got to be a better way to solve this problem. And so she thought, well, what if I can create like a thermos specifically designed to keep breast milk chilled for while I'm at work all day so that if I'm at work in meetings, I can still pump and have breast milk by the time I get home and not have to pump and dump. So she, with no engineering background, never having sold anything online before and having very little time to do this because you can imagine full-time lawyer, two young kids, husband drafted overseas, um, leaves very little time to do anything else, yet alone start a company. But she had this vision and she's like, you know what? I want to help empower moms. So she set out and designed this chiller to do it. And fast forward after 18 months of launching her first launch, she sold hundreds of uh, units of this on Indiegogo. And then, you know, within 18 months, she is on Amazon, she's selling on Shopify, and they're doing over 500k a year. And she's still and this is part time. So when we look at who her customer is, she was literally herself, she was a busy mom that commuted to work that had a pain point. And so she solved this problem for herself. So when we define who her customer is, it's a mom on the go. It's a mom that travels. It's a mom that values breastfeeding and having that still accessible to their kid and giving them a solution to being able to breastfeed for the first 12 months of a kid's life or a baby's life. And so she defined her customer based on either be beginner moms or moms that want to breastfeed but don't feel it's accessible because of jobs or meetings or commuting or moms that just want to be able to safely store breast milk even on long flights or in airports or, or whatnot so she was able to define her demographic um luckily because she designed this really for herself so she was literally her customer um but that's not always the case so that's one new working moms you then have, we talked about Cali weights already. We have Jamstack. Jamstack is a electric guitar amplifier that um, Chris designed this amp five years ago. He got the idea because he was trying, he wanted to be able to play electric guitar wherever he wanted. But if you play electric guitar, you know that in order to play well, you at the time would need a lot of, ex like uh, a lot of wires, heavy expensive equipment and just the setup you're looking at over a thousand dollars to get set up to be able to play outside of your basement and so frustrated one day Chris is like man there's got to be a better way so hey what if I attach a portable speaker to the bottom of my guitar and rig it up as an amp would this work hatch the idea for Jamstack he ended up having a pain point he solved it in his life he then brought it to a party and had like five or six other guitar players be like, dude, what the heck? This is amazing. You've got to build something from this. And so fast forward 
four years after multiple product launches, they are now doing over $5 million a year in revenue. Chris has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in either inventory financing, angel investment, et cetera, et cetera. So he, with this, was able to scale that quickly, not by just saying, I'm going to bring a guitar amp to market, but by really focusing on the pain point and who the person is that he's serving and why that electric guitar player would want freedom to be able to play wherever they want and however they want it. So when you go to define who your person is, think of it in terms of what is the problem you're solving. And it's okay if you did not design a product, like a problem, you did not um, design a product to solve a problem in your life, but maybe you were inspired because you really value, like really value sleep and you understand how important it is for, for recovery. So you designed a line of sleep supplements to help a certain group um, improve and improve their sleep or whatnot. So again, what you're not bringing to market is a product that helps people sleep better. You want to get really clear on who are you helping sleep better? Who is that person? Okay. So really define that. That is your second exercise. Your second assignment is to journal and get really clear on who your person is and who you would serve if you had no competition. Pricing wasn't a concern and you can literally, like, it's an open market. Who is that person? And again, you could either share this below or if you don't want to share it, you just want to keep it private. Type done in the comments when you've completed this assignment. Okay, guys. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, that wraps up day two of the challenge. You could jump ahead to video three right now by clicking here. And if you are loving the content that we're putting out in this playlist, be sure to hit subscribe. We've got over a hundred videos on this channel. So we've got something for everyone. Be sure to binge watch that. So anyway, we'll see you in video three.